Hello, it's Jane from JD Paper Crafts here. I've been doing a series of uh, table favours for Christmas with my Zoom classes, so I thought I'd come on and do a video for the next one in the series. It's this little faceted box, um, which is a self-closing box. I've got another one here from my prototypes that hasn't got ribbon in. Uh, it's a self-closing box so you just squeeze it on the sides there to open it and then when you close it just give it a little press there and it will close. Yeah, cute little little box. Um, you can do different sizes of it. Uh, I've done three different sizes here. All attempted to video and it's gone wrong every time so let's hope that this this time it will it will actually work. Um, that one I made with a piece of four by six, four inches by six inches that is, so that would be about right for um, perhaps a Ferrero Rocher from a Christmas table, something like that. Um, that one was with five by six and that works out a little bit taller, so that one works out about three and a half inches tall and that one's about two and a quarter, like that. This one I've done for a, a tube of hand cream. So again, it's a, it's a nice way of wrapping up uh, tubes. And that one works at about six inches tall. That was with seven and a half by six, that one. They're all exactly the same instructions. The only difference is how big your piece of paper is to start with. So this time I'll, I think I'll do a six by six piece. Um, I'm gonna use the first frost papers which are absolutely beautiful. One side is foiled. They're lovely, I think. And uh, the other side is all photographic images and beautiful colours. And you can make a lovely Christmas card out of these. All you'd need really is uh, that on a a card base and a, a bit of interest with a greeting or something like that and you've got a Christmas card. That one I think is lovely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with a piece of six by six. If you wanted to make a different size it could be four by six or five by six. Um, and start with your pattern going this way with the top being along this left hand side and score at seven eighths of an inch that would be two centimeters turn it through 180 degrees and you want to score at one and three eighths of an inch or three and a half centimeters now turn so that the narrower section, the top bit, is at the top and score at two and three quarters and five and a half. Oh, I forgot to say if, if you were working in centimetres I would cut it down to being 15 centimetres. That's by 15 centimetres or 15 centimetres by whatever height you wanted. Okay, now turn it so that the bottom section is up at the top and you've got a narrow section there which will be your tab and then these two sections which are the same size and you want to score in the middle of it just to that first score line there. So you want to score that at one and seven eighths and at four and five eighths. If you're working in centimetres that would be four and a half and eleven and a half centimetres. Okay. And normally I would do all my cutting before folding any of the score lines but I 
think you might not be able to see them if I don't fold them. So I will fold and burnish all of these scripts. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I just won't, won't fold those short score lines. Right, you need a ruler and your scoring tool. And you want to score from the end of that short score line up to both of the top corners of this panel. Like that. And from there, make sure you can find the score line. Same on the, the other panel. So from the score line, the short score line, up to the corner of that panel and up to the other corner. Now, um, you should have a section, a narrow section there. This bottom piece you don't need. You can remove that. I would remove it at a slight wedge. Okay. And then on each of these three score lines, the two short ones and the one that goes all the way up to there, you want to cut up them just to that score line and preferably just cut a slight wedge What you're aiming to do, if I show you from the other side, is this bumpy section here. You're trying to just remove that. So you, you don't want to wedge in a long way, just a, a tiny bit. That one. Don't forget the other side of that panel. Just a tiny wedge. Okay, now fold and burnish all of your score lines. That one goes that way. That one is best done, this is the top part, best done back on itself. Both of the vertical score lines and then you want to fold and burnish all of your diagonals as well. If you don't want to do the diagonal lines it, you won't have the faceting on it but the box would still work without that and you might prefer that the way that looks. I'll show you one I've done that one, you can see how it's a, a more rounded front and back instead of the faceting. And all out, that is exactly the same, but without these diagonal lines. Okay. So put some tape on the tab section. If you ever struggle to get tape off, just give it a little bit of a, a rub with your bone folder. Take a pokey tool and you should be able to just peel up that edge and remove it. Really easy. At least it is with stamping up tear of tape. And then fold the tab over and if you fold at the middle Fold, and then that should meet up nicely with that edge. Just make sure you're reasonably straight there. Right, before you go any further, we now need to work on the, the top section. I think you don't have to do this bit, but I think they look quite nice round, with rounded corners and with a little hole in the centre for a ribbon. So 
just round both of those corners and put a hole I'm using the trio punch for mine just line that up punch a hole alternatively you could use something like one of these types of punches So that's the top section done. So now you just need to assemble the bottom section. If you wanted to make these in advance, I would stop at that point. You could even decorate it if you wanted. If you wanted a, a label on it or a ribbon through it, you could do all of that now and then store them flat. And then this section do when you're almost ready for it. So find where your seam is so my seam is there so i'm going to because my seam the tab goes onto that section I'm, i want that piece to go in last so i'm going to fold that one down and put some little bit of glue on it i think wet glue is better here because um it gives you some wiggle room Put a glue on that section and then so you're just folding all four corn all four sides in and that is basically it all it needs now is a ribbon so I've got a part of let me just check it's about a four inch piece of ribbon if you fold it in half and then fold that again to a point and go from front to back um, and then make sure it doesn't, all, doesn't go all the way through and then fold, open out the loop and then the ends can be fed through that loop. A lovely little box. So, so I've now got a, a variety of sizes there. I hope you like it. See you next time. Bye for now.